Hans, give us a bit about your background. I mean, I know you did that TV series, The Spiral, but it's actually not the, the, the series, The Spiral, we know here. So no, no, can you just give me a, a bit about your background in filmmaking? Uh, well, I started out as a film director 10 years ago, I think, making all kinds of different films. And in Belgium, if you want to make films, you have to... There's like three or four years between every film because it's a whole state-funded system and the market is so small, you can only make a film every three years. So you need to do something in between. So I went to do television because I like television. I like television drama. So I did all kinds of stories. I did adaptations of books. Um, uh, I directed an original series. I directed some episodes of existing series. But the thing that I like most is characters that are uh, troubles, characters that are fighting their past, characters that have to make choices and then uh, live with the consequences. I think that's like a constant thing in all in all my work. I mean, the Flemish film industry, I mean, what we know about it outside of Belgium is things like, you know, Fabrice de Welts' movies and um, uh, Man Bites Dog and, and those sort of, Loft even, but yeah. those, it's those that sort of seem to be travelling internationally. Well, the first two examples are examples of French-speaking right. films. We've got those things in Belgium, there's like the French-speaking part, they make good films, they win a lot of awards in Cannes, for example, that I've been bothers, but nobody goes to see them. And they are very frustrated about that. And on the Flemish side, we make a lot of films. There's a lot of things going on. There's a big audience in the theaters. Uh, and we start to win awards now, but it used to be, that used to be the way they won the awards, we got the audience. Okay, well, moving into the treatment. I mean, now it all started with the scriptwriter, Carl Juice, who was actually asked to adapt something. He, if he, he was told if he could adapt anything he wanted to, what would he do? And he That's chose true. this English writer. He's a very... Uh, uh, Anglo film, Anglo file, I don't know the word in English, but he loves English literature, he loves the whole English culture, and he uh, he wrote a success film called The Alzheimer Case in Belgium, 10 years ago or something, and indeed he was asked, he could adapt anything he wanted, so he went for Mo Hyder, I think he read all the novels, and he chose, he chose the treatments, because the story is really, really gripping, it's, it's a page turner, and uh, so he started to work on that, and I think um, it took him two years to adapt the story, to work on it, um, before the real, the, the first script was there, because it's, I mean, it's a very complex story, of course, there's a lot of background which is spread out over different novels, so it was quite a complex adaptation, I think, but he did a really good job. So what did Mo Hader think then, when she was suddenly phoned up by this, you know, these, these Belgian guys? Thinking, you know, <laughs> well, she's a very, she's a very, she's a great woman, woman, actually, I don't know what she thought, but she must, I think the, the, the difficulty with her books is that they are very, very dark, and it's, I mean, you've got, you've got horror, but it's, it's really very intense, so I think people have tried to make films from her books before, in the UK, even in the, in the US, but I think it always stopped at a certain level because it was too grim or too dark, and then people started to change things to make it more mainstream, and then I think she didn't like it anymore. So in a way she was glad that it was a small community, a small country, and uh, contacted her now. So I guess she learned pretty fast that Carl could go all the way, that we didn't have to bring things down or tone it down or something. So I think she was curious to see how, uh, how it would work out. So she didn't mind the fact that her lead character was actually completely transformed into sort of the, the Belgian cop? Mm, well, I don't think so. No, yeah. I think it's, it's, the transformation is not so big, actually, because, of course, I mean, his name is a bit different. It's a mm -hmm. Flemish name now. But apart from that, his character, character is, is more or less the same, I think, as in the book. So when did you get involved in this, then? And had you read the book? And uh, I didn't. I hadn't read the book, so I was. I was shooting the spiral. I was in Copenhagen when I got. It's like I got a phone call from the producer saying that they were working on this project, and he wanted me to read the script. And uh, it's almost like a cliche. They sent it over. I started to read it at night. I couldn't stop reading, uh, and so I phoned them in the morning just before we started to shoot uh, the next uh, day. That I was really interested because again I found these themes that I'm that I'm always looking for. Um, reflected in this story, these themes of, of of trying to cope with your past, not being able to move on until the past is closed, and, and on top of that was was this great story. So for me, it was. Because let's be honest, I mean the story, I mean the actual theme of what the serial killer is actually doing is really quite horrendous. Actually, I mean that's that's the one I think that actually gets people, especially if you do have children. I think yeah. so it's really quite 
oh my god, and I think it's that sort of, did you ever worry about that, thinking it was a case of, oh my god, you know, this is a bit too strong? Well, I was very aware of that, of course, it influences a lot of the decisions that you take while you're casting, for example, or while you, while you are developing the style of the film, because I didn't want the film to be exploitation or something, so all the choices that we made were very sincere and we wanted it to be, um, I, don't, I didn't want to use any famous actors in it. Apart from, from the main actor here, it's my uncle Dave, although he was really well known in Belgium. Um, I wanted to underplay the emotions just, just to be very, just to be as authentic as possible. Now you mentioned here Van Rampenberg. I mean, was he like the first choice? So you say he's a big star there. I mean, was there anybody yeah. else? Yeah, well, he's a big He was a very well known theatre actor and he was, people knew him. I think they knew his face, but they didn't know his name. So the right, he was a right choice because I was looking for somebody who would, would really drag the audience along throughout the film. I think, I think you handle the reveal very well because it's a very clever film with the fact that you are actually introduced to the killer without you really knowing it. I think that's actually it's really one of the, the, the moments I think you actually do really pull off very, very well when you actually think, oh my God, it's actually that person. So we did, we did a lot of test screenings actually and I think we made a first edit and then we had a test screening to see at what point the Two people start to believe that he's the killer, or he's the killer, so that you can still adjust the doses that we give of, of one sure. actor or, or the other. I mean, there are three or four possible uh, killers, mm. so you really play with them and how much you give for that one. It's mm. it's it's, uh, mm. it's finding the right balance. Mm. And you end quite bleakly, really. I mean, it's quite it's got quite a bleak ending, I think, because they never get back together again, really, do they? The, the brothers. No, we changed that. In the book, it's different. The book ends uh, more hopefully, uh, and the the ending in the script is was more hopeful uh, as well. So we shot an ending where we actually shot an ending where they meet again, the two brothers, where uh, our main character is driving along the road through the fields, just because he wants to pay a last visit to that house, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden he sees somebody walking in the fields. Uh, who has this uh, Indian feathers, which they also had under the small, and he stops his car and he looks and he sees this guy and they, we had a very nice, very wide shot where they came together. I mean, we went closer with the cameras, but you saw that from a distance. It was really nice, actually, but it didn't work in the editing. That's the bizarre thing about cinema. Sometimes on the paper it works, and when you shoot a scene it works, but when you bring it in the editing, for some reason it's it's didn't it didn't work. It, it's so that we so we. Uh, by accident, almost also shot a shot which is almost the last shot with the hands mm. slung against the window, which is my hand actually, just, <laughs> just bumping into the window. And we tried to use that, and it was so much better. It, um, it made the film even darker, of course, but it felt more organic. As if the story ended better that way. Mm.